Maybe you're trying to pick between the Canon EOS 7D Mark II or the Canon EOS 250D, also known as the Rebel SL3, but you're not sure if they're still good in 2023. In this review, we'll discuss both their strengths and weaknesses so that you can make the right decision. First off, let's address which lenses are these cameras compatible with. These cameras can work with Canon EF and EFS lenses, like the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 and the Canon EFS 18-55mm kit lens, and other lenses from third-party brands are also an option. You have a wide range of options to choose from. The lenses mentioned were reviewed by me, along with several others. If you are interested, you can find links to these reviews down below, or click the card in the top right corner. Okay, now what about storage? Do they have a dual SD card slot? The 7D Mark II does, while the 250D does not. This feature is typically only found on high-end cameras, not mid-range or entry-level models. Also, I should add that the 7D Mark II does not take two SD cards, but rather one SD card and a CF card. The advantage of this feature is that you can have backup copies of your photos in real time. In case an SD card fails, for professional photography jobs, you can still retrieve all your data from the second SD card, which contains the copies. It is rare to experience SD card failures, especially if you use multiple SD cards that you rotate on a regular basis, but there is still a possibility. Furthermore, you have the option to disregard the backup function and utilize each card independently, effectively increasing your storage capacity by two. Another important point to consider is, do they have Wi-Fi connectivity? The 250D possesses Wi-Fi functionality, however the 70 Mark II does not. Bluetooth capability is present in the 250D, but the 7D Mark II does not possess this feature. How about NFC? Is it available on either of these cameras? Neither of these cameras come equipped with NFC capabilities, no. Next up, can they be carried around easily? The 7D Mark II has dimensions of 148.6 x 112.4 x 78.2mm, or 5.85 x 4.43 x 3.08 inches, and weighs around 820 grams, which is the same as 28.92 ounces. Meanwhile, the 250D measures 122.4 by 92.6 by 69.8 mm, or 4.82 by 3.65 by 2.75 inches, and weighs approximately 450 grams, or 15.87 ounces. Both cameras are quite compact considering their dimensions, but this depends on the lenses you attach to them. The 7D Mark II and 250D differ in their build quality. The former is constructed from magnesium alloy, while the latter is made from a combination of aluminium alloy, polycarbonate resin, and glass fiber. As such, the 7D Mark II boasts a superior build compared to the 250D. Another crucial point to mention is, do they have decent screens? The cameras both have screens on the back that are good enough for going through menus and viewing pictures, the 250D has an articulated screen that can be turned around in order to protect the glass surface from scratches when it's in your bag. This, of course, allows for vlogging. In contrast, the 7D Mark II has a fixed screen that can't be moved or adjusted. You can quickly and easily check your settings using the small LCD on top of the 7D Mark II, however. This LCD also adds a cool look to the camera. While some people may not find this LCD aesthetic appealing, I love how it looks. Expanding on that, these two devices are quite versatile. How long can I expect their battery to last? The number of shots you can take with the 7D Mark II's LPE6N battery is around 650, while the LPE17 battery of the 250D can give you approximately 1000 photos. Keep in mind that various factors can influence battery life, such as screen usage, battery age and even air temperature. It's recommended to bring extra batteries when shooting, especially if there are multiple people involved. By the way, if you find this video to be helpful, you can show your appreciation by liking this video. Additionally, if you'd like to buy any of the items mentioned in this review, you'll find affiliate links below in the description or in the pinned comment. Next up, what can you expect in terms of image quality? The images you capture hugely depend on the lens you choose However, let's talk about the camera's impact, since I don't know which lens you'll use. For starters, let's talk about the sensors. The 7D Mark II has a 20.2 megapixel 
22.4 by 15 mm APS-C sensor. Body 250D features a 24.1 megapixel, 22.3 by 14.9 mm APS-C sensor. Now, in terms of processors, the 7D Mark II is equipped with the Digic 6, while the Digic 8 is available for the 250D. You might be wondering what improvements the Digic 6 and 8 brought to Canon cameras. The Digic 6 brought several advancements such as better performance in low light settings, decreased lag in comparison to earlier models, and 1080p video recording capability at 60 frames per second, among other improvements. The 8th Digic generation brought several enhancements such as improved dual pixel AF, better tracking performance, 4K at 30fps, and enhanced autofocus. In terms of ISO, the 7D Mark II has a range of 100 to 16,000, expandable up to 51,200, whereas the 250D can go from 100 to 25,600, also expandable to 51,200. It's advisable to keep the ISO on the lower side whenever possible, as elevating it can cause disruptive noise in your photos. So, are they equipped with dual pixel AF? Yep, both have it, which is fantastic as Dual Pixel AF significantly increases the camera's autofocus capabilities. Having Dual Pixel AF and a high number of autofocus points means increased autofocusing capability, which is incredibly helpful. So what about shutter speed? If you want to capture fast-moving subjects, can these cameras do that? So the 7D Mark II has a maximum shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second, while the 250D can do 1 4,000th. Now, what if you want to take loads of photos quickly, like in sports or wildlife photography? Well, what you're looking for is continuous shooting mode. In this mode, the 7D Mark II can do 10fps, while the 250D can do 5fps. In other words, within one second, the 7D Mark II captures 10 photos, while the 250D captures 5. This is very handy if you're trying to capture very fast motion. Within that second, the more frames you are able to do, the better the likelihood you will obtain the precise snapshot you seek. In terms of AF points, the 7D Mark II has up to 65. On the other hand, the 250D only offers 9 AF points. Okay, so can the 7D Mark II and the 250D be used for video? The 7D Mark II model can record in 1080p at 60fps, while the 250D model can record in 4K at 24fps and 1080p at 60fps but neither of these cameras offers the Canon Log feature that allows you to enhance the dynamic range of your camera footage. Okay, so do either of these cameras have built-in optical image stabilization? Nope, neither of these cameras has IBIS. Now, most cameras offer digital stabilization, but as a general rule you should stay away from that. Playing with the in-body digital IS may not produce great results. Additionally, the stabilization feature gets recorded in the final video, without any backup available. It is not considered worth it to use this feature. It is always better to shoot shaky footage and stabilize it in software like Premiere, which is always improving. If you desire optical stabilization, you should purchase a lens like the Canon EFS 18-55mm kit lens with IS in the name. Acquiring this lens will provide better in-lens stabilization than in-camera digital stabilization. Another important point to consider is can either of these cameras be used for vlogging? At this point, pretty much any camera can be used for vlogging, but there are a few issues to bear in mind. First off, having a flip screen is ideal, so you can see what you're doing when the camera is turned around. The 250D includes a flip screen, but the 7D Mark II does not. You will find it easier to vlog with a flippable screen. Interestingly, having a screen that flips around also protects the glass surface when you store it inside your bag. Additionally, let's consider the camera's sensor type. Both cameras have cropped APS-C sensors. This type of sensor produces a zoom-in image compared to full-frame sensors. With this in mind, you should use lenses with shorter focal lengths. This will keep your video from being too zoomed in for handheld vlogging, especially when considering the camera's crop factor. For handheld vlogging, the 18-55mm kit lens is suitable. You can simply zoom out and capture a lot more in the frame. If you purchase the version that comes with IS, it will help produce smoother video, which is ideal for most situations. The Canon 24mm pancake lens can also be used as it is wide enough, 
but its footage tends to be shakier as it lacks any IS. When it comes to shooting content on a tripod, the lens recommendations change significantly. Instead of opting for the 18-55mm lens or the 24mm, you might want to consider the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 or f1.8. These lenses have a wider aperture, allowing in more light and creating a mesmerizing bokeh effect which blurs the background nicely. However, you should note that both these lenses would not be suitable for handheld vlogging since they are far too zoomed in and do not have IS. If you want to know more about these lenses, you can find the links down below or click the card located in the top right corner. Moving on, how long will the 7D Mark II and 250D last? So the 7D Mark II has water and dust resistant sealing, while the 250D has no weather sealing. You should handle it with care and not expose it to the elements too much. Cameras are rated for a certain number of pictures before the shutter might fail. The 7D Mark II has a rating of 200,000 actuations, or the 250D can only handle up to approximately 100,000 actuations. Each time you take a photo, it counts as an actuation. If you take 10 pictures daily, 200,000 photos could last around 54 years. However, with 100,000 photos, you could expect it to last for almost 27 years. Bear in mind that it's possible that other parts of the camera may break down before the shutter gives out. However, you should still double check how many pictures the camera has already taken by reviewing the listing before buying. Okay, so what are these cameras good for? Both cameras are suitable for various photography genres such as portraits, street, product, landscape, wedding, event and documentary. When taking such photos, the lens you select is more significant than the camera model itself. If you are interested in capturing photos of sports and wildlife, the process becomes a bit more complicated. While the lens you choose is still crucial, other factors must be considered. To succeed in sports and wildlife photography, you will need a rapid shutter speed and a high number of frames per second in continuous mode. The 7D Mark II has a maximum continuous mode speed of 10 FPS, while the 250D has a maximum speed of 5 FPS. Furthermore, the 7D Mark II has a maximum shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second, whereas the 250D's is 1 4,000th of a second. I hope this review has been helpful. If you're curious about the cost of these lenses in your area, there are affiliate links down below for your convenience. If you'd like to check out more reviews, you can either look down below for relevant links, or click the card in the top right corner. Do you have any questions? Feel free to comment down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.